Are there other examples of communities and nations that have begun the transition away from fossil fuels? What does it take to welcome the turbines and solar farms of the new energy system and say, yes, in my backyard? This is the story of two communities that at first look very different. Samsa is a small island off the Danish mainland. West Texas is a vast, dry expanse in America's south. What both have is abundant wind. At times, Samsa produces more electricity than it uses, exporting surplus power to the Danish mainland. And Texas wind now generates as much power as the next three U.S. states combined. Samsa and West Texas both solved the NIMBY, not in my backyard challenge, that has stymied so many renewable energy projects. It's not easy, but with patience and persistence and the efforts of the right people, it can be done. Okay. My name is uh, Søren Hermansen and I'm, uh, I'm the director of the Samsø Energy Academy. Samsø means in Danish, it means the meeting island. When you make a circle around all of Denmark, then Samsø is right in the center of the circle. But it wasn't geography that brought Lurke Fries, then Denmark's Minister of Climate and Energy, here in mid-2011. It was why and how this community had turned NIMBY into yes in my backyard. Well, Samsu is a pioneering project in a sense that uh, Samsu way back decided that uh, Samsu should become uh, independent of fossil fuels. Before its transformation, people thought of Samsa as just a cute tourist community, busy in summer, empty and desolate in winter. Now, people come here not just to see the turbines, but to understand the process that got the community to welcome wind energy. After a national competition, SAMHSA was selected by the Danish government to be a proof of concept for how to transition from fossil fuels. But it was up to individuals like Saren Hermansen with the passion and skills to affect change, to figure out just how. So when we won, the, the normal reaction from most people was that, yeah, you can do this project, that's okay, but just leave me out of it. SAMHSA has a deep attachment to its past and values its traditional way of life. But gradually, we won their confidence in establishing easy projects to understand and also easy projects to finance because basically it's all about what's in it for me because it's not convinced idealists or green environmental hippies who lives here. CERN, a native of the island, convinced some of his neighbors to become early adopters. They found success and spread the word. Jern Tranbeer operated a large and profitable herd of milk cows. After initial reservations, he invested in a turbine on his own land. When that went well, Jern became part owner of one of the offshore turbines. Farmers, uh, they have to invent new things and be, and be ready for, for, for changes. So when they see a potential, they look at it, no matter what it is. They look at it and say, could I do this? And, all. and if they see fellow farmers do the same thing, they, they're very quick to respond to that. So even being very traditional and conservative in their heads, I think they have this ability of, of, of making moves and do things because they have this independency in them. A farmer is a free man. Maybe he owes a lot of money to the bank, but he's still a free man in his thinking. It was seeing what was in it for them and for their community that won over landowners in West Texas. And it took one of their own, a man whose family had deep roots in Roscoe's cotton fields, to educate them about wind farming. Well, I'm, I'm really a farmer farmer. You see, <laughs> I, uh, I farmed for almost 40 years. We're in the... Uh, Right in the middle of the Roscoe wind farm. And we've got uh, about 780 megawatts of production. That's per hour. Enough electricity for about 265,000 average homes. Roscoe had no oil and faced hard times in the early 90s. But it did have wind. When this land was acquired, there was absolutely no value to the wind. Fact is, it was a severe detriment because of the evaporation of the moisture. 
Cliff, like CERN, had to work with his neighbors to get them ready to accept wind turbines. The first thing farmers want to know is, well, how much is it going to cost me? Cost them nothing. What's it going to hurt? Three to five percent of your farmland is all it's going to take up. You can do what you want to with the rest of it. Then it came down to, well, how much money is this going to make me? Cliff did his research and checked his numbers with wind experts and the Farm Bureau. Then I was able to go to our landowner association and show them where, where they had been receiving $35 to $40 an acre. Then the landowners could expect somewhere in the neighborhood of a, three times that. In fact, farmers stand to make ten dollars to $15,000 a year per turbine just from leasing the wind rights. There was no guarantees in it from the very beginning, but uh, sure enough, we've got, I think, in the neighborhood of 95 or more percent of our area that accepted the wind farm. In both SAMHSA and West Texas, individuals saw economic benefits, but the whole community, beyond the investors and landowners, benefited too. Because of the wind farm now and the people working in the wind industry, now we've got jobs available and opportunities for young people to come back from college or, or from technical school or from whatever. It's just been a godsend. For Kim Alexander, superintendent of the Roscoe School District, that godsend translates into dollars. In 2007, prior to the, the wind values coming on our tax roll, our, our property values were at about $65 million. And then that wind development, they jumped approximately $400 million to $465 million. The school district will get more than $10 million over a decade. That guaranteed revenue stream unlocked additional funding. School buildings, some dating from the 1930s, could be updated and computer labs added. This is an indication to me of what can be done for rural areas and will be done all the way to Canada, bringing life and prosperity and back to these rural communities that are suffering just like we have. The same oil shock that got Brazil started on ethanol got Denmark started on manufacturing wind turbines just in time to compensate for a decline in its shipbuilding industry. And it's also good for the economy in terms of export. I mean, 10% of Danish exports comes from the clean tech area. Energy and environment always require trade-offs, such as clear vistas versus clean energy. It's something that communities have to make time to work through. Cliff, for one, believes it's worth it. Everything, the schools, the churches, the civic organizations, all the businesses will benefit from this. It'll increase, hopefully, our town's populations and our, our economics. My granddad used to uh, just say, not realizing he was prophetic, but, uh, you know, if we could sell the wind, we'd be wealthy. Well, who would have ever thought we'd be able to sell the wind? Uh... For SAMHSA, Denmark, and Texas, Clean energy brought economic benefits and energy security. But replacing fossil fuel emissions with wind power has other advantages. And let's not forget, also good for climate and health as such. And that's a very important argument. We've got a constant wind resource here that's, that's tremendously valuable. And as opposed to oil and gas, uh, it'll last forever. And it doesn't pollute anything.